Here's the approach and the kick. It is a low kick headed to the far side. McKinney at the five. Straight ahead, 10, 15, 20. 25 for McKinney. Breaks a tackle, and he will get close to the 29-yard line before he is shoved back. And it's David Ray who is the tackler on special teams. A 20-yard return for Justin McKinney in pretty decent field position for the Cats, just shy of their 30-yard line. Well, Josh Freeman will make his fourth career start here today. He'll be playing in his seventh game as a true freshman. He's from Grandview High School in Kansas City, Missouri. He will be the leader of the Wildcat offense. And James Johnson is going to get the start at the running back spot ahead of Leon Patton. Wildcats will send a wide receiver to the far side. That's Yaman Figures. Two receivers to the near side. And let's see what happens here on first down. Ball on the far hash. Back to throw is Freeman. Looking over the middle. It's caught by Jordy Nelson. He's got it at the 35 to the 40. And up to the 44-yard line is Jordy Nelson. He got 14 and a first down before he is tackled on the play. Great to see Jordy back in there. That is his 18th catch of the year. But it's been a while for Jordy Nelson, Stan. It's been since the Baylor game that he has caught a football for K-State. And with the formation K-State used, he came from the slot but ended up going right where the tight end normally goes up, right over the center of the field. Nice throw by Josh Freeman on first down. Near the 45, first and 10 Wildcats. An I formation set, and we've got a stoppage right at the snap as the Wildcats have John McCardle in the ball game as the fullback. Prior to the snap, a false start by number 69 of the offense. The penalty is five yards, and it's still first down. That's Caleb Handy downstairs to Matt. Talking about wide receivers after the catch, Nelson came hobbling off the field, his helmets off, and also Jermaine Marrera in street clothes today for K-State. Wildcats will send two receivers to the near side of the field. That's Daniel Gonzalez and Yaman Figures. Two tight ends here on the near side. It's Jaron Mastrude. First and 15 cats from their 40. Back to throw is the quarterback, Freeman. Near side, it is caught at the 43-yard line by Yaman Figures and dropped immediately by Chris Singleton. So a fairly short gain of about three yards on the play for the Wildcats. We remind you, Decatur County Feed Yard, people you can trust. Call them at 888-675-2212 or visit their website at decaturfeedyard.com. K-State now second down and 11 from their own 43-yard line here on the near side. Daniel Gonzalez will go wide left. Here on the near side, it's figures. And also Kansas State will put Antonio Brown in the game. He's flanked to the left side. Freeman, it's the draw. Straight ahead, Johnson, 45-50. James Johnson to the 45-yard line and close to a first down in Iowa State territory. Wildcats got good blocking at the point of attack. James Johnson took advantage. Alvin Bowen is the tackler, and that is very close to the first down marker. Yeah, great blocking downfield. The offensive line showed pass and then immediately worked upfield, and we're making blocks five and six yards downfield, which allowed the Wildcats to gain about 12 yards on the play and get first down yardage into Iowa State territory to the 45. Last week, K-State had 12 possessions. Nine of those possessions, they went into Missouri territory, but still did not score that many points. I formation. Here is Johnson trying to work left side on the stretch play, and he will take it for about a half yard just inside the 45. Second down and a long nine coming up as Alvin Bowen again makes the tackle for Iowa State, the nation's leading tackler, a staggering 13.4 per ball game. He's uh, from East Orange, New Jersey, and played at Garden City Community College. What impresses you, the 17 tackles against Nebraska, the interception and 15 tackles against Iowa? How about 20 tackles against oh. Toledo? I mean, he has been running all over the field, making tackles from his weak linebacker position. Second and 10 cats from the 45 of Iowa State. Up under center is Freeman. Quick handoff, and this is Johnson at the 40 and spins down close to another first down, just shy of the 35-yard line. Kansas State will be looking at very short yardage on third down here as Caleb Berg from the secondary comes up and makes the stop. Very, very nice run by James Johnson, who was terrific last week against Missouri in defeat. 20 carries, 127 yards, and a touchdown, averaging 6.3. Wildcats will send two receivers to the right. That is Daniel Gonzalez and Yaman Figures flanked inside of him. Quarterback sneak here and the fans roar as Freeman gets it down to the 33-yard line. A gain of three for Josh Freeman, and here comes Jordy Nelson back in for the Wildcats, who move the sticks again. No score, 11.35 to go here in the opening period. Fans happy to see a quarterback sneak, something they haven't used too much with Josh Freeman in at quarterback, and then they... 
can continue their cheer because Jordy Nelson trots back on the field. That's good news for K-State. You can take life as it comes or grab life by the horns. Dodge, 11-20 and counting. Time remaining first quarter. First and 10 catch from the Iowa State 33. Yaman figures wide left, two receivers to the right side as Jordy is flanked inside of Gonzalez. Quick throw, far side figures. Nice juke. He moves inside the 30 and down to the 29-yard line. He gets four there. Chris Singleton is the tackler for Iowa State. It brings up second down and six yards to go. This has been a nice methodical drive for the Wildcats. 10.55 to go here in the period. Four runs, three passes. That's what you've got to do against Iowa State. They give up 4.4 yards a carry in their rush defense, worse than the Big 12. They give up 74% completion percentage against their defense, worse than the Big 12. You've got to be able to go attack them at both areas. Here's Freeman. He's going to pitch it on the reverse to Yaman Figures, far side. Yaman the corner at the 30 and spun out near the 26-yard line. He got about three on the play. Iowa State stayed at home pretty well. It's John Banks who makes the tackle for ISU. John Banks started the first five games at free safety. Then he was moved to outside linebacker because Adam Carper was hurt. Fortunately for Iowa State, he used to be a free safety because he saw the play developing. He was the backside linebacker who was running toward the option. Now, K-State has not run an option all year long. They fake an option and pitch out to the wide receiver who crosses in front of the running back and goes the other way. Good play by John Banks to read it. He was the only Cyclone there, but he made the tackle. Third and three cats from the Iowa State 26. Freeman on the draw, and this is going to be short for James Johnson. He gets close to the 25. Got about a half yard on the play. Iowa State stayed home and read it well, and the Wildcats will try for three. It's Tyrone McKenzie, the tackler, and Jeff Snodgrass comes in. Jeff, 11 kicks over 40 in his career. He is 10 of 15 on field goal tries this year, and this one will be in the neighborhood of 43 yards. A chance to take the lead early on with 10 minutes to go in the first. Dylan Meyer will be the Wildcat holder. Jeff Mortimer is the long snapper. Good snap and placement. Kick on the way by Snodgrass. An end over ender. This one is no good. And Kansas State with a nice drive turned away as Snodgrass misses the 43-yard field goal. And it remains nothing, nothing with 9.49 to go here in the first. Trips to the left, a wing back to the left, and a wide receiver to the short side right. That's Austin Flynn. Again, no Todd Blythe, Stevie Hicks out of there as Scales is the running back. He'll get the call here, running right side. Scales to the 30, 35 to the 40-yard line. He got 14 yards on the play in an Iowa State first down running to the short side right. And the tackler is Courtney Herndon, who gets the start at the free safety spot today in place of Marcus Watts. It'll be a different style running game. Last year, Kansas State, when they saw Iowa State, or anytime you watch Iowa State with Stevie Hicks, he's an NFL type of back. He just keeps pounding at you in the middle, pounding, pounding, never fumbling, never losing yardage. Now we're going to see more of a Missouri offense where you got more of a scat back back there with Jason Scales. Five wideouts in the pattern. There's the snap to Meyer. Quick throw near side to Austin Flynn. 45 to midfield to the Kansas State 45 and tackled shy of the 40 near the 42-yard line by Kyle Williams. Another quick throw out into the left flat. 19-yard gain for Iowa State first down. There are three receivers to the left wide, and K-State was in a cover two, so the corner was rolled up. The safety was back off, and then a linebacker just scooted a little ways out. That meant there were three defenders and three offensive players and really only two defenders until the safety could get up into the action. Well-designed play by Iowa State to throw the screen down the line. Good blocking, and for the second play in a row, they get a good gain, and they move into K-State territory. Some roll to the right, Davis to the left, single setback. For Iowa State, first and 10 at the K-State 41. Back to throw is Brett Meyer, right side and incomplete at the 25 as Sumrall got tangled up with the Wildcat defender, freshman Joshua Moore on the play. It's second down and 10 from the 41 of K-State for Iowa State University. No score, 848 to go first period. K-State fortunate there's no call there. It shouldn't have been, but anytime a receiver gets tripped up for any reason, you worry about a flag coming out, but Josh Moore slipped right at the same spot that R.J. Summerall did. The ball was thrown five yards outside of that, expecting a clean out cut. It wasn't. Incomplete pass, Iowa State. Austin Flynn to the left, trips to the right. Meyer in the gun. Scales the running back to his right. Scales will run left side, now cuts back to the middle, got to the 40, and maybe to the 39, a short gain of a couple. 
Blake Siler, Zach Dials getting together for the Kansas State tackle. And Iowa State has their first third down opportunity here. And unbelievably, Jason Scales comes up limping pretty badly for Iowa State. It doesn't look like he is in any condition to continue playing. We remember, remember Stevie Hicks not in the ball game. Jason Scales, a sophomore, injured early. So now they got to go to a true freshman. Josh Johnson, who has only one carry this year for six yards against UNLV. And no receptions for the young man from Ponca City, Oklahoma. Third and eight Cyclones at the Kansas State 39. Ball on the near side of the field. And it's two receivers to the far side right. Wide receiver Milan Moses to the left. Brett Meyer in the shotgun stands at the 45. We await the snap, and there it is. Meyer, the junior, back to throw, looking down the middle. It's caught by Barkham at 25, and he'll take it to the 21-yard line. Ben Barkham of the tight end, tackled by Courtney Herndon. First down Cyclones, 18 yards on that throw. Well, the true freshman had to pick up a blitz. Now, he didn't do it in classic form. Josh Johnson went up and kind of stuck out his arm and could have been possibly called for a hold, but he did get in front of Zach Dials. That allowed quarterback Brett Meyer to find his receiver, Ben Barkema, down the middle, and Iowa State converts. Here's the handoff to Johnson, and he is pushed back by Quint Nichols and others. They'll give him forward progress to the 21, which is the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and 10 as Q makes the tackle. Eccles, the senior from Fort Worth, Texas, his 24th stop of the year. He had three last week in Columbia, Missouri. Just a couple plays ago, Kansas State brought in a whole new defensive line. Starters out, second group in. They want to keep them fresh. They want to be able to attack the quarterback. Pass rush is a key to the Kansas State offense. Two receivers to the right, three Should receivers to the left. Yes, second and 10 from the 21. Mylon Moses now to the near side, so four receivers that way, and Moses has the ball at the 20. Breaks a tackle at the 15 and down to about the 13-yard line. Nice gain on the play for the Cyclones. Zach Dials is the Wildcat tackler. Short of the first down, let's go downstairs to Matt. Eric Childs came within an eyelash of batting that pass down, just a little like getting his hand up. The question I had is, with the thin nature of Iowa State's running back core, how much more pressure does that put on Brett Meyer? He's used to it being a veteran quarterback, and right now they're trying to outnumber K-State by lining up three or four wide receivers to one side of the field and hope the Wildcats don't put enough guys over there if they're playing zone. Third and three from the 14. Running play left side, big hole, and it's taken down to the six-yard line for a first down by Jason Scales. He was tackled by Ian Campbell. So Scales nicked up early right back in there and makes a play there, and now he'll head to the far sideline. How could he possibly run Is around? No, I may be wrong on that. That may have been Sumrall. Let's check on that one. That may have been Sumrall. It's first and goal. It scales. I mean, I, yeah, I thought it, it was scales, scales too. Yeah. He limps off the field, can barely walk, and yeah. then he burns around the left side for a first down. First and goal at the six for Iowa State. There's the snap to Meyer. Scales straight ahead. Now angles to the left, and he blows into the end zone for an Iowa State score. It's 6-0 Cyclones with 5.52 to go in the first. Amazing. Kansas State driving early and stopped and missing a field goal, and Iowa State right down the field to take a 6-0 lead. Offense is the feature card for Iowa State, and you saw it with a little momentum there. What a great job of being a change-up type of back. Jason Scales is the guy who will get you seven or eight yards when Stevie Hicks might only get you three or four. Now, Stevie Hicks is very reliable about getting you that three or four all the time, but what a great drive by Jason Scales. Brent Culberson will try for the point after for Iowa State. Placement is down, the kick is up, and good. 7-0 Iowa State, 5.52 to go here in the first period. Josh Grebon to kick it. Teed up in the center of the field, the kick away. High end over ender, and back, back, back for this one. Nobody will field it, it's through the back of the end zone for a touchback. NK State will start at the 20. Wildcat football brought to you today by NK Brand Seeds. Ask your NK Brand Seed dealer about our new corn and soybean products for your area. Why you mentioned that their red zone production has been very good. Do you realize hitting 22 scores and 25 opportunities is second best in the Big 12 in percentage scores? And that's not a ton of field goals. That's no. only four field goals down there, 18 touchdowns. So they haven't got to the red zone as much this year averaging only 21 points a game, but when they've gotten down there, they've kept the momentum and they got seven sure points. Josh Freeman is the quarterback for Kansas State and up under center. 
Five receivers in the pattern. Quick throw to the outside and dropped at the 25-yard line by Yaman Figures. Yaman was tightly covered, and that throw was just above his shoe tops. Downstairs for a sideline update. Here's Matt. Well, a change on the offensive line. Logan Robinson now in for the Wildcats at left guard. Caleb Handy out of there. K-State second and 10 from the 20. Remember, Caleb Handy had one of those five-yard penalties that drives Coach Ron Prince mad, giving up five yards without it being a physical type of play is something he hates. High formation set. Here's the draw. This is Johnson, and he can't get not anything going here as he is hit at about the 17-yard line by Alvin Bowen. Boy, did he get through there quickly. Big loss on the play, a loss of three. It's going to bring up a third down. Let's call it a loss of two, third and 12 from the 18-yard line. K-State has gone to the draw play a lot today. They want to make it look like a pass, which they've had plenty of pass plays, and then their complement off of that is the draw. The middle linebackers read it very well and stuffed Johnson in the backfield. Jordan Bedore is the center. Wildcats send two receivers to the far side, figures to the right. Johnson is the running back. Offset to the right side and back to throw is Freeman. Josh scrambling and now spun down at about the 12-yard line. Big rush coming from defensive end Sean Moorhead, and he gets the sack at the 12. Fourth down for the Wildcats, fourth and 17 after that sack at the 13-yard line. Sean Moorhead, an ex-walk-on from Mason City, Iowa, in a four-man rush there, was just able to fight off the block in time with no one open downfield. Freeman was looking to run. There was nowhere to go. He was sacked by Sean Moorhead, so K-State will be forced to punt. Iowa State with a fine twist there. Ryan Baum is back at midfield. There's the snap to Rayer. Kick is away, and it's a high floating kick. Baum is hammered as he tried to field it. Two flags are down, and the ball is covered by Kansas State at the Wildcat 47, but now three flags down. It was Justin McKinney who got there early, it looked like. Justin McKinney is playing that flyer position because Marcus Watts is injured. He has not had to do that very much this year. He knows about the dangerous returner and Ryan Baum. The kick was so high, so well done that he got down there, but he hit Ryan kick Baum. interference by number 22, the kicking team. The penalty is 15 yards from the spot of the foul, and it's a first down. Three receivers to the far side. Here's a handoff to Scales to the left. He's at the 35 and knocked down at the 31-yard line. Quentin Eccles and Blake Seiler there for the Wildcats. Pretty decent game, though, on first down for Iowa State. It'll bring up second down and five. Three and a half minutes to go first period. Cyclones right back to the huddle here. And Scales, who was nicked up early with a big run for the touchdown a moment ago. And here comes Iowa State right back at the Cats. Second and five from the Wildcat 31-yard line. John Davis comes wide left. Short bunch to the right side. Rolling to the right is Brett Meyer. Has some time and throws off the hands of Sumrall at the 15, and he is covered by Joshua Moore. We pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to K-State Football. Dan Weber, it's early in the game, but this is a big play. Third and five Cyclones from the Kansas State 31. Especially as deep as it is here for in field goal range. K-State has not stopped Iowa State yet on third down. Milan Moses goes in motion. So four receivers to the right, one to the left. They're going to throw to the left, and it is incomplete at the 27-yard line. And the intended receiver, Hamilton had it momentarily, McKinney covering. As he went down, Stan, that thing was still almost on his hip. And K-State unfortunately missed an opportunity. You can't blame Justin McKinney. They ran a quick slant pass, and with a blitzer coming free to the quarterback and Brandon Archer, quarterback Brett Meyer threw it very early to a redshirt freshman, Marquise Hamilton. He missed the football. It bounced up in the air, and Justin McKinney might have been able to grab it, but he was busy trying to make the hit. All in all, it's a missed opportunity for Iowa State. They've got to try a field goal. 48 yards for Brett Culberson. Very accurate kicker. Here is the snap and the placement and the kick. This one has a chance. It's good. 48 yards for Brett Culbertson at 255 of the first quarter, and the Cyclones now lead 10 to nothing. That is a very big kick for Brett Culbertson. Grebon to kick off for the third time for the Cyclones, and he will kick it off to the far side, and it will be fielded at about the two-yard line. McKinney stays on that left side and gets to the 10, and now down he goes at the 12-yard line. As a mistake by Justin McKinney. He had to lean over the sideline to catch the ball near the two-yard line. 
if he would have let it drop, K-State would have got the ball to 35-yard line. And the other dangerous thing is if you touch it and it falls out of bounds, you get the ball back at the three. And if you step out of bounds, same thing. He was able to catch it, keep his balance. But Iowa State's coverage, knowing that the ball was going to be kicked to that side, they kicked the football off with the wind, pushing it near the sideline. Because of that extra wind, it could have easily gone out of bounds. But K-State tries to return it, gets it out only to the 13-yard line. About a 10-yard return there for McKinney. Eye formation for the Wildcats. Here's the turn and the give. Left side to James Johnson, and he powers his way across the 15 to the 16-yard line, getting three on that play. They got a pretty good crease over there. Running to the left side, it'll be second down and seven for the Wildcats. K-State football brought to you by three-a-day dairy and your local dairy farmers. Stay healthy and get your three-a-day today. Ten-nothing Cyclones. Two minutes, ten seconds left in the first period. Josh Freeman up to the line of scrimmage. He'll send two receivers to the near side right. Single setback is James Johnson. We have not seen Leon Patton. There's the handoff to Johnson, and Johnson straight ahead to the 21-yard line. He'll pick up about five here. K-State will need three, about two and a half to three on third down coming here as we play the final two minutes of the first quarter. Iowa State got a six-yard run from Jason Scales to cap a 74-yard drive to make it 7-0. And then a 48-yard Culbertson field goal a moment ago made it 10-0, and that's where we're at. Cats desperately want a first down here. Third and two from their own 21, moving from left to right in the bright sunshine here at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. Cedric Wilson to the right, twin receivers to the left. There's the fake to Jordy, now throws over the middle. It's at the 30, 35-40. Jordy Nelson to midfield, and finally dragged down at the Iowa State 45-yard line by Jason Harris. That was a pump fake to that left side for Jordy, and then he went straight up the field to the Cyclone 45. Perfectly done by Kansas State. Josh Freeman's height really helped there because on a third and three play, he was trying to just throw the ball real quickly down the line to his slot receiver, Jordy Nelson, but he didn't see an opening. The defenders were in his way. It looked like he was in trouble and going to be sacked, but Jordy Nelson just took off against coverage by Jason Harris, a free safety over the middle, and quarterback Josh Freeman could see it. Freeman fakes to the back and now rolls to the right and throws. He's got his man Mastrude at the 30, and Jaron Mastrude takes it to the 28-yard line of Iowa State. Another first down, a gain of 17 on the play. Jason Harris, Alvin Bowen on the stop for the Cyclones. Let's go downstairs to Matt. Yeah, shuffling still on the offensive line. Last series, Robinson was at left guard. Now he's at right guard. And the thing I love about a wide receiver, a guy that can lay out a great stiff arm, that's what Jordy Nelson did a couple of plays ago. 45 seconds to go here in the first. Wildcats trailing 10 0, but at the Cyclone 28 yard line, first down. Wide receiver to the far side left, two tight ends. Here's the turn and the fake. Freeman looking left, now middle, throws to the middle, and it is caught by Wilson, and he will get forward progress to about the 23 yard line. He'll pick up five right here. Drenard Williams is the tackler for the Cyclones. First catch of the day for the Wildcat receiver. That'll end the Cedric first quarter. Wilson. Yep, they're going to run down the final 15 seconds here. And after one, Iowa State will have a two-score lead. It will be 10 to nothing. Josh Freeman up under center. Single setback, two receivers to the near side. Cedric Wilson to the right. Here's James Johnson off left tackle, and he is pushed back as he gets just inside the 21-yard line. A gain of a couple on the play. Kansas State looking at third down as Rubin makes the tackle. Ataba Rubin is from Pensacola, Florida, coming to Iowa State from Trinity Valley, Texas Community College. And trying to fill in for Nick Leaders, who was the best defensive player for oh. Iowa State last year, caused all kinds of havoc early in the game. He was in K-State's backfield so much. First team all Big 12. He is one of the many defenders for Iowa State that graduated. Third down and three Wildcats from the Cyclone 21. There's the fake to the back. Freeman rolls to the right. And now will throw, and it is caught at the 11-yard line by... That's, that's going to be Rashad Norwood for the first down as Singleton makes the tackle. And Cyclone is slow to get up. That ball was pretty well thrown on the run by Josh Freeman. 
to the tight end, Rashad Norwood. It's Chris Singleton that's injured for Iowa State, but nice defense by Iowa State early in the play as Kansas State ran a naked bootleg, and Josh Freeman, as he rolled out to the right, had a defender coming toward him and a defender coming Jaron Mastrud, his expected tight end. So he had to go to the second option over the middle of the field, had to throw it over some Iowa State players. Again, the height of Josh Freeman, the high release allowed him to get the ball over the defenders, and in stride he hit Rashad Norwood, and Kansas State converts on a third down play, gets a first down down near the 10 yard line. Freeman is seven of eight throwing the ball so far for 88 yards. This was after he struggled last week in Columbia going five for 19. First and 10 Wildcats, the ball just inside the 11 yard line. I formation, Wilson comes wide to the near side. Two tight ends, Mastrud on the left. And Norwood on the right. Here's James Johnson. Johnson breaks a tackle, gets to the five, and close to the four. Running between guard and tackle over there, he saw a little seam back to his left and took it that way, and John Banks makes the stop near the four. Second down for the Wildcats, second and goal from the four. Good running. He did a nice job of going up toward the line of scrimmage and then realizing he could cut back to his left, even though the play was designed to go over to the right. He showed good power to finish off the run, get six yards down to the four. Norwood and Mastrud remain the tight ends. I formation, and Wilson comes wide left. James Johnson remains the running back, gets the call here. Good block by the fullback, and taking it to the three-yard line is James Johnson. McCardle with a nice block, and it's going to bring up third and goal for the Wildcats from the three. McKenzie makes the stop for Iowa State. Now personnel changes for Kansas State. K-State running in two or three players on almost every play, now sends out three wide receivers. So they're going to have three wide receivers, a tight end, and a running back. It looks like they'll probably try to spread Iowa State out, make them think about the pass, but probably hit them with the run. Figures goes wide to the right. Two receivers to the left, Gonzalez and Jordy Nelson. Iowa State showing blitz. Now they back out a bit. Here is the handoff to James Johnson, and Johnson spins down at the two-yard line. It will be fourth and goal from right there. And the fans unhappy at the moment with Iowa State leading 10-0. And a decision coming here for head coach Ron Prince. He'll send Jeff Snodgrass into the game. The football is back near the two-yard line. Last week it was just inside the one when Kansas State decided to go for fourth down. This is a sharp angle. Jeff Snodgrass missed his first field goal. He's on the right hash inside the 10-yard line. This is a 19-yard field goal with a sharp angle. Not an easy play here. Mortimer will snap it to Dylan Meyer. There's the placement. The kick is on the way. Snodgrass got it up and through there, and the Wildcats are on the board. At 11.51 of the first half, it's Iowa State 10 and the Cats 3. Here's the approach and the kick, and with the breeze, Snodgrass got a lot of this one over the head of Marquise Hamilton and through the back of the end zone. The Wildcats scoring a moment ago in the red zone, and we remind you, you score your own touchdown in the Case IH red zone with a new Magnum tractor from Colby Ag Center in Colby. Well, there's a flag on the play over on the far side of the field. Cooper Castleberry, the referee. After the play, a personal foul on number 43 of the kicking team. The penalty is 10 yards, and it's a first down. That is Antoine Moore, and that really hurts. That is going to have Ron Prince pacing that sideline even more briskly. 10-3 Iowa State with 11.48 to go in the first half, and it's going to move the ball to the Iowa State 35. Unbelievable. His first discussion is with the official to make sure he gets the interpretation correctly. Then he'll have a chance to talk to Antoine Moore, which he is doing right now. Iowa State out of the huddle and up to the line of scrimmage. The running back for the Cyclones is the freshman Josh Johnson. Whiteouts to the left and to the right. There's the snap and the give is to Johnson. Johnson running right side is hit hard and pushed back at the 35 by Brandon Archer. Virtually no gain for Iowa State. Maybe a half yard, we'll call it second down and nine. Attention, Kansas farmers. Maximize your farming operation by consulting a certified crop advisor. They are committed to professionalism and ongoing professional education. To learn more, visit kansasag.org backslash CCA. Kansas has finally scored. 2.40 to go in the third in Lawrence, Colorado, leading the Jayhawks 9-7. We'll talk about that and 
more of the Big 12 as we go along here in the period. Second down and nine, Iowa State. There's the snap to Meyer. Looks left, throws that way. Austin Flynn at the 35. Pulled down at the 36 by Antoine Moore. Antoine Moore, who made a mistake a moment ago, did not make one there. That was a terrific tackle. Yeah, you know he's a focused guy who wants to get out and make a play because he realizes after getting talked to by Coach Ron Prince that 15 yards hurts. It was that wide receiver bubble screen thrown down, trying to outnumber the Wildcats if they're playing zone. K-State did not get outnumbered over there, and then making a nice tackle from inside out was Antoine Moore. Brent Meyer is 4 of 7 for 45 yards. Third and nine Cyclones from their own 36. Ball on the far left hash. There's the snap. Meyer, the junior, back under some pressure. Steps up. He's going to run 35 40, 45 to midfield. He's got the first down by a good five or six yards. Knocked down at the Wildcat 49 by Brandon Archer. Well, that's a guy who has been around a while. Brett Meyer has been playing since he was a freshman. And he was not in a big hurry stand when he saw the opening. Straight up the field he went. Well, he dropped back in the pocket and he saw the blitz coming. And he just when he got to his last step, rather than staying in the pocket, he saw a little gap through the line and an opening on the right side of the field. Very decisive scramble run. We talked about that in pregame. That's what he did a couple of times last year. Just enough running to keep a drive alive. Walter Nickel in motion. Here's the turn and the give. This is Scales left side and he is knocked down by Zach Dials at the 46. A gain of three. It'll bring up second down here for Iowa State. We mentioned that Colorado Kansas game. It's 9 7 now after three. Oklahoma won at Columbia today 26 to 10 and Nebraska leading early second quarter at Oklahoma State 10 nothing downstairs to Matt. The front line the offensive line for Iowa State doing a great job against K-State's front four. Ian Campbell giving up almost 90 pounds against his counterpart Aaron Brandt the right tackle for Iowa State. Second and seven for Iowa State at the Wildcat 46. There's the snap to Meyer. Meyer is going to run the ball on the quarterback draw bounces to the outside and he'll go down at the Wildcat 42 tackled by Devin Anderson shy of the first down by about four yards. We'll call it third and three officially. Good tackle by Devin Anderson. Unfortunately for the Wildcats, when the quarterback draw came out of the shotgun, Brett Meyer took off upfield, and there unblocked to make a tackle was Kyle Williams, the safety. Kyle was moving up, and he's done a great job of tackling in the box, and all of a sudden, he gets knocked down because Blake Seiler gets blocked, and like a pinball, knocks the next guy down, or and suddenly they didn't have the tackle until later. Third down and three, back to throw as Meyer steps up and he will be knocked down by Blake Seiler at the 44 yard line. A loss of two on the sack and that is a big play. Seiler got there first, but there were a couple of other Wildcats there too, including Ian Campbell. That was a fine defensive play by the Wildcats and very much needed as we hit the eight minute mark of the first half. Cyclones on top 10 to 3 and they'll have to punt the ball away with Mike Brantner. That's the key thing that you said there why they have to punt They get stopped right in that first scoring area at the K-State 44 but that's not close enough to try a field goal. We await the snap to Brantner averaging 41.3 per kick angles this one towards the middle of the field and a fair catch is taken by Jordy Nelson at the 11 yard line and the Wildcats will start there when we come back. Back at Bill Snyder Family Stadium and the Wildcats starting first and 10 at their 11 and Freeman tries to throw over on the right side and it was nearly intercepted but dropped second down and 10 cats at the 11 yard line. John Banks is playing that linebacker position. Remember he was a free safety to start the year. He is able to react better than most linebackers. He got into the passing lane. Josh Freeman is going to have to take account of that. Getting into the game for the first time is K-State's running back Leon Patton. It's been James Johnson in the first quarter for K-State. Patton's in the game now. Ball in the center of the field at the 11-yard line. There's the snap to Freeman. Patton will work to the right side. Needs a block, and he will take it to about the 13, and that ball is loose, and a big scramble forward at about the 10-yard line. K-State, I think, got back on it, but Leon Patton hit hard, and that ball squirted out of there, and the Wildcats fall on it at the 10. Mastrude. Fortunately for K-State on the football sweep to the right or an off tackle that ended up going to the right only for a two yard gain or so and Leon Patton fumble. Now he was not battling a fumbling problem 
going into last week's game. And the ball was wet, was probably yeah. the biggest explanation. But for whatever reason that the ball comes out of your hands, sometimes it becomes a problem. K-State fortunate they recovered that fumble. Gonzalez and figures to the near side left. Third and 11 Wildcats from their own 10 ball on the far right hash. There's the fake to the back and rolling back towards the end zone is Freeman. Now under pressure, gets a block, sidesteps a man at the goal line, gets to the five and out to about the seven yard line. Unbelievable athletic talent there. Save the Wildcats as Sean Moorhead finally brings Josh Freeman down. It'll be fourth down and long yardage for the Cats. That was close to being trapped in the end zone. Yeah, uh, block. Just a slight block by Logan Robinson kept the defender away from grabbing Josh Freeman when he was one yard deep in the end zone. As he rolled to his left and tried to throw the ball downfield, he got out of the end zone, juked past about four or five guys, but still got sacked. Good snap and the kick by Rare. High spinning kick, bomb, fair catch, and there's a bumping there, and the ball is loose, and it's going to go back. Picked up by Iowa State, and now it's loose again, and it's Archer who falls on it at the 15-yard line. Ryan Baum just throws his hands up into the air as to say what in the world is going on. He tried to corral that ball and could not. Then an Iowa State player hit it, knocked it back farther than that, and Archer then outraced that player to the ball at the 15-yard line. The punt was coming down to the dangerous Ryan Baum. He was sitting under it. Justin McKinney was coming close, but a blocker who was blocking Justin McKinney ran into Ryan Baum. So Ryan Baum did not catch the football. It was rolling downfield, not good for Iowa State, but no big deal until Chris Singleton of Iowa State, for some reason, thinking it had been touched, went up and tried to pick it up and fumbled it. Here's Leon Patton working right side and not much there, maybe to the 13 for a couple. The Wildcats with a real opportunity here with 5.30 to go in the first half and trailing 10 to three. Chris Singleton was running downfield away from his own goal line toward K-State's goal line and tried to pick up the football because he thought it was fumbled at midfield. It wasn't. It could have rolled dead and been no problem. But he didn't get it. He just scooted it further upfield. Didn't pick it up, and K-State jumped on it. Jaron Mastrud and the Wildcats have great field position because of the Iowa State mistake. Wide receiver to the right, two to the left. Patton is the running back. There's the snap to Freeman. Working left side is Patton, and he is slammed to the ground at about the 11-yard line. A gain of a couple, and the tackler is Alvin Bowen, and the fans booing here at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. Wildcats now looking at third down and six. Big hit by that leading tackler in the nation, Alvin Bowen. Really did a great job of knocking down Leon Patton off of his feet. The Wildcats have the ball at the 11-yard line. It's third and six. Already six tackles for Bowen, the leading tackler in the country with 107 coming into play here today. They're having trouble getting the signal. Josh Freeman with the clock down to five already is going to call timeout. Ron Prince also signaling timeout. Time that doesn't hurt Kansas you in the first State. half. First timeout. Third and six cats. Here we go. There's the snap by Bedore. Freeman back to throw. Flushed out of the pocket to the right. Still on the run and throws. Caught by Wilson. Bumped out of bounds at the two. They'll mark him at the three-yard line. Wildcats get it first down. And Caleb Berg is the tackler. Good play by Josh Freeman. Iowa State brought a blitz and flushed him from the pocket. He kept his composure running to his right. He delivered the ball perfectly on an out cut to Cedric Wilson. It was man-to-man -man coverage. Two receivers over there right in stride. The ball was delivered, and K-State converts on third down and gets the ball down to the Iowa State three-yard line. Terrific play by Wilson. Figures comes to the left. It's an eye formation set, two tight ends. There's the snap. Josh hands it off to Leon Patton. Patton pushing towards that goal line, but stopped it about the one. Maybe close to the one-yard line there. The Cats now in the Case IH red zone. Score your own touchdown with a new Magnum tractor from Roth Equipment Company in Larned. We're at the four-minute mark of the second quarter. Iowa State led at 1.10-0. The Cats with a touchdown here could tie the game. Officially, second and goal just inside the two-yard line. K-State's knocking on the door again, but it has been a struggle for the Wildcats in the red zone this year. McCardle in the game as a fullback in front of Leon Patton. Two tights, back to throw is Josh. He's got a man, touchdown, John McCardle. John McCardle with the score for the Wildcats, and we've got a one-point game. Iowa State 10 and the Wildcats 9, pending the extra point. McCardle 
out of the backfield stand, wide open over on that right side. He was the fullback, and he leaked out to the right side. No one went out with him. They took the fake up the middle of the running back. Josh Freeman delivered the ball very early and softly. Josh Freeman has his first career touchdown pass. John McArdle has his first career touchdown reception, and K-State has a chance to tie the game here in the first half. Jeff Snodgrass will try to tack on the extra point. He's 15 for 15 this year, and this one is good. And we're in a 10-10 tie. 335 to go here in the first half at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. And it's going to be about eight yards deep. Cyclones will take a knee in the end zone and will take it first and 10 at the 20. Yeah, Baum was going to try to field that ball, and it, it, he got hit by his own man and then Singleton touched the ball and he and Archer race for it and Brandon Archer with the recovery at the 15 and the Cats take advantage. Iowa State uh, probably was talking about what we thought our punt returner got bumped into but that all quickly got forgotten because they couldn't believe the ball got touched by Chris Singleton about 25 yards further downfield. Iowa State has not had the football in a while but they finally get it here at the 20 yard line. Brett Meyer and company back out there. There's the snap and the give to Scales right side. Jason Scales will take it to the 24-yard line. He got four, second down and six upcoming. Iowa State with all three timeouts left in a 10-10 game. Stephen Klein is the tackler for Kansas State there. Downstairs to Matt. I believe in the numbers. Stan talked about it in the first quarter. This is Iowa State's best quarter in terms of scoring. Coming in 51 in the second, they've only scored 51 in the entire second half. They usually fade as the game goes along. Second down and six Cyclones from their own 24. There's the snap. Meyer to throw, looking, finds Sumrall, and it's knocked away from him by Moore, but a penalty flag down at the 30-yard line here on the near right hash. Josh Moore must have been there just an instant too early against R.J. Sumrall. They tried to throw a slant pass to the short side of the field right in front pass of the K-State bench. From number 13 to the defense. It's a spot foul and an automatic first down. It's not a bad play, though. It's only a four or five yard gain. If the guy catches the ball on the run, it could easily turn into a 20 yard gain. Yeah. So you got to make a play. And if the officials are going to call a penalty, that's, that's fine. Give them a few yards. Kansas State football brought to you by Delta Dental of Kansas, the first choice of Kansans and Wildcats for group dental plans. Delta Dental, committed to service, committed to you. First and 10, Iowa State at their own 30. Moving from left to right in a 10-10 tie. There's the snap. Meyer back to throw, looking left, throwing left, and Sumrall's got it. A knee down at the 33. He got three left side, and Devin Anderson made the tackle for Kansas State. Clock now running again, two and a half minutes to go, second period. Three yards on the reception. Second and seven. That's second and seven coming up after the catch by R.J. Sumrall. When K-State plays their cover two, they love teams to try to complete a pass underneath them and go make the tackle, and that's exactly what happened for a three or four yard gain. Wide receiver to the left, two to the right. Sumrall is in the slot inside of John Davis. Back to throw, Meyer under pressure. He cannot get away from Zach Dials. Zach Dials makes the tackle back near the 23-yard line. That was a well-timed blitz because K-State actually brought two linebackers. First, Brandon Archer came, and the one back in the backfield blocked him. But right after him in sequence, Zach Dials came through, and there was no extra back to block him. So he got right in on the ankles of Brett Meyer and pulled him down for an important sack, and K-State calls timeout. Brett Meyer in the shotgun. Two receivers to the right, wide receiver to the left. Meyer steps up. He's going to run the football, angles to the right, and falls down before he gets blasted at the 25. So he got two out of that. It'll be fourth and 15 in the Cats. Timeout. Kansas State, final timeout. Wildcats take their final timeout with 1.51 to go. Brantner stands at his 11 here on the near side. We await the snap. Yaman figures back at the Wildcat 35. Here's the kick away. Pretty good kick. Held up by the wind, and figures will field it at the 35 and goes down at about the 38-yard line over on the far side. Ryan Baum made a terrific open field tackle there. A 37-yard kick, virtually no return, and the Wildcats have a minute 42 in which to work here in the period. Ryan Baum is the good returner for Iowa State leads the conference, but he hasn't had an opportunity to return a kick, so he goes down and makes a nice one-on-one -on -one tackle. The Wildcats run out. They're ready to snap the ball as soon as the official starts the clock. Wide receiver right, two to the left. Running back is Leon Patton. 
Back to throw is Josh Freeman. Josh will shoot it down the middle. It's overthrown and intercepted at the 35-yard line. And the man who picked it off was Jason Harris. Harris had an easy pick there, and Jordy Nelson tackles him with a minute 31 to go before halftime in a 10-10 tie. Josh decided he was going to throw the ball down the seam to his tight end, Jaron Mastrude, and he got held up just a little bit. Josh didn't fire the football. He lofted it into the air a little bit and overthrew his tight end running right down the hash. Now, Iowa State was in a cover two. Jason Harris had backed up on that hash, and he was there almost like a punt to catch a football. The sun was in his eyes, so it looked for a second like he wasn't going to be able to grasp it. He did make the interception, though, and Iowa State's the team that gets the football now at the 33-yard line with 120 left and clock running. KU leads at home against Colorado. We'll see the Buffs next Saturday. It's 20 to 9. In the shotgun is Meyer. He looks, shoots it down the middle. It's caught at about the 37-yard line. And Scales tackled immediately by Antoine Moore. Gain on the play is about four yards. It's second and six from the 37 for the Cyclones. Under a minute to go on the half, tied at 10. 53 seconds and counting. Back in the gun. Meyer looks right, throws that way, and it's caught by Hamilton, and he'll take it to the Wildcat 48. Marquise Hamilton with a fine play. Andrew Erker, the tackler, that's a first down. And Iowa State, timeout. as they get 11 Iowa there, State. Iowa State first will call timeout. a timeout with 45.8 seconds to go in a 10-10 tie. First and 10 clones at the Cat 48, near side of the field at the hash mark. There's the snap to the junior Brett Meyer. Under pressure, gets away from Eccles, rolls towards the sideline, and now throws it away. The intended receiver was Josh Davis. Josh Davis did not react to Meyer getting flushed from the pocket. He almost got sacked by Quinton Eccles, but then he rolled out to the right. Davis was standing on the sideline and just stood there. Now remember, Todd Blythe, his favorite target, his roommate, right. is not on the field. Todd Blythe would have turned up field, ran about 10 yards, and then stopped. And they have that routine down and made it look like he was running away from the coverage and then stopped, and they would have had an opportunity for a catch. This time he just had to throw it away. Blythe is not feeling well today. Here's Meyer throwing again, and it's near side, and almost picked off by Moore, and then I think caught by Iowa State at the 18-yard line. Mylon Moses caught the football. Oh, it was completely underthrown on a fade route or a fly upfield. Mylon Mo Moses running upfield. The K-State defender Joshua Moore on his inside man-to-man. -man. Joshua Moore saw the football, went inside and had an easy catch except for he bobbled it and it fell into the hands of Mylon Moses who just got over there to try to make a tackle. 26 seconds to go, Meyer to throw. Near side and it's Sumrall incomplete about eight yards deep just inside the far right near pylon I should say. And I'll tell you what, that was pretty good coverage there by Josh Moore. Also there, Kyle Williams. 20.7 seconds to go in the half, tied at 10. Cyclones from the Wildcat 18, second and 10, downstairs to Matt. On the previous play, the wind knocked down the football, just floated and floated. Guess that's why they call them defensive backs. No hands. Cyclones huddling up just outside the Wildcat 20. Davis and Hamilton go wide to the far side left. Here to the near side, it's Moses who made that play a moment ago, and Sumrall. Here's Meyer. Throws far side on the slant, and Davis takes it to the five. Lost the ball, or did he? K-State says they've got it at the four, and they do. K-State's got it at the four-yard line with 14 seconds to go in the half. Davis got blasted just inside the five, and the ball squirted out of there. There's a nice slant pass, this time to the open side of the field in between three defenders, but the Wildcats, Kyle Williams got up there to make the hit, and then the guy coming from inside out just blasting him, knocking the football away. Looked like it was one of the linebackers, maybe Zach Dials, but he just totally separated the ball from the wide receiver who was ready for a hit from defensive back type players, not the linebackers. Great hit inside out, knocks the ball loose. Iowa State had the ball inside the five when it was knocked away. K-State gets the fumble, and they'll be able to get out of the half without Iowa State getting on the board. Brandon Archer got that ball on the fumble recovery, and Davis still very, very slow to have any movement here at the four-yard line. He just got torched at about the five-yard line. And he is slow to get up. He caught the ball in between a linebacker, a corner, a safety, 
and did a nice job of running upfield. The tackle started to occur. Kyle Williams was coming off of the hash and making the tackle, but inside out, just a freight train hit from the side that Davis would not see, knocks the ball loose. That's the kind of hustle play you need. K-State gets the fumble, and they'll get the football at the three-yard line, just ready to watch the clock yep. run out. They wind down the clock, three seconds, two seconds. We have played 30 minutes of football and nothing decided yet. Wildcats 10, Iowa State 10 in the 2006 homecoming game. We're ready for second half action. Wildcats and Cyclones in a 10-10 tie in K-State. We'll kick off to start the third quarter with Jeff Snodgrass. And he'll kick from right to left from south to north. Here's the approach and a good kick here. It's an end over ender and back into the end zone about seven yards or so. Cyclones will start after the touchback at their own 20. Coach Ron Prince told our Matt Walters that the players know what they need to do here in the second half. You have to act like this game 0-0. That's easy because the score is 10-10. You got to come out and set the tone in the third quarter. It's something that the Wildcats have struggled with this year. They've been outscored in the third quarter 65 to 33. Now, Iowa State's had their troubles in the second half as well, scoring only 51 points all year in the second half, only 15 points in the second half in the last three games. Which of these two teams that have struggled in the third quarter will take hold of the early action here as we start the third quarter? Andrew Erker in the game for the Wildcats. So is Devin Anderson as the Cats go into the nickel situation. First and 10 clones at the 20. And here's Brett Meyer, the quarterback run to the right side. And he is pushed back at about the 22-yard line by Alfonso Moran and others. So a gain of a couple, second down and eight coming up. Scott Stevenson is the center. Schmeling and Zier the guards. Aaron Brand and Scott Fisher the tackles. Ben Barkema is the tight end, but we've also seen Walter Nickel. John Davis and Austin Flynn are the receivers. We've also seen Sumrall and Marquise Hamilton here today, along with Mylon Moses. Second down and eight for Brett Meyer and company from their own 22. Cyclones and Cats in a 10-10 tie, and Meyer in the shotgun. Trips to the left, two receivers to the right. There's the snap. He's going to throw left side. It's caught and taking it out to about the 31 yard line is the receiver. It'll be a first down here for Iowa State gain of about nine on the play. That's the first catch of the day for Yusef Messiah. They don't use him a lot, but he picks up a first down here. It's a bubble screen. They're putting three receivers out to the left. And K-State, if they're playing a zone, if they're in their cover two, will have two in the area. The safety can come help, but he's going to be back 12 yards or so and have to run up and try to make the tackle. If you can get a block on that slot defender, you can usually get upfield and pick up a first down. Iowa State did, taking the ball out to the 32-yard line. Two tights, wide receivers left and right, scales the running back. In the shotgun is Brett Meyer. There's the snap. He'll retreat towards the 20, steps up, throws far side, and it's caught on the sideline but out of bounds by Sumrall. Right there covering was Justin McKinney and Andrew Erker also in the area. Second down and 10 clones from their own 31 in the bright sunshine here at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. The ball was thrown high to the outside against man-to-man -man coverage, just a fade type of route, hoping the receiver can go up and make the catch where the defender has no chance, and then just keep your feet in. R.J. Summerall at 6-1 barely did not get his toes in after catching the football. Remember, they're used to throwing the ball to Todd Blythe. His 6-5 frame would have been enough to make the catch and keep his feet in bounds. Austin Flynn to the left, trips to the right. Second and 10 from the 31. There's the fake to the back and a quarterback keeper here. And it's a nice gain out to the 41 yard line by Meyer. That's just shy of the first down, it appears. Zach Dials is the tackler. Brett Meyer, the junior from Atlantic, Iowa, with a very fine move on the quarterback draw, nearly got the first down. He didn't take any time. It was a planned run play. They pulled their right tackle, Aaron Brandt, one of the best offensive linemen, all the way over to the left side. So he faked the ball to the one back in the backfield out of the shotgun from left to right and then went off left tackle, pushed near the first down marker. Nine and a half to 10 yard run. Good athletic run by Brett Meyer. Pretty big player at six foot three, 208 pounds. He had enough for a first down just barely. So the clones have the ball out at the 42 yard line. We've got Zach Dials now for eight tackles. K-State football brought to you in part by the Kansas Independent Oil and Gas Association, whose members include Russell Oil, Trilobite Testing, and Anderson Energy. First down Cyclones at their own 41 in a 10-10 tie with 13-10 to go in the third. And John Hewlett, who does not get a lot of action, a true fr freshman from Wichita Collegiate, is out playing linebacker. Hewlett has been practicing well, though, and he's in there now. 
Scales is a running back. Here's the turn and the give to Scales. He'll take it to the 40, right side 45, and bowled down at about the 46 yard line. Williams and Archer, the tacklers for K State there. Gain of five, second down coming up, second and five from the 46 yard line. Cyclones moving from left to right. They are three and five, and 0 and 4 coming into play here today. By the way, Kansas defeated Colorado 20 to 15. Nebraska at halftime leading in Stillwater 23 20 against the Cowboys. We'll see those buffs next week out in Boulder. And there'll be a one win football team, but that win was a surprise over Texas Tech. Second and five from the 46. There's the snap and the handoff to Scales, and Archer corrals him for a loss at the 44, a loss of two. Brandon Archer so fast when he wants to get to that hole, and he got there in a hurry. It'll be third and seven. That's a veteran play. When an outside linebacker reads a blocking scheme, he knows exactly what's coming. And because of it, he darts straight upfield and changes the angles. Instead of a lineman being able to kick him out, he's already past that lineman and in the backfield and tackling them for a loss. It looks so easy when you know the design of the play, you react to it correctly. That's what Brandon Archer did. Third and seven Cyclones from their own 44. Here's Meyer under pressure, and it's dropped and almost intercepted. Mylon Moses, the intended receiver, he got a hand on it, and that ball almost ended up into the hands of Josh Moore. It's fourth and seven. John Hewlett came in the middle linebacker blitz, and he came free, hit Brett Meyer. Meyer did a good job of still getting the ball out accurately to the right side. K-State defender had fallen on the ground, and Mylon Moses had a great chance to catch the football, but he does not pull it in. It's incomplete. Iowa State is forced to punt. 11.36 to go, period three, a 10-10 tie. Brantner stands at his own 30 here on the near hash. Wildcats have Yaman figures back at the 17-yard line. Good snap, knuckleball kick, ball bounces at the 26, bounces forward, and now back towards the K-State end zone. It's going to be down at around the 26-yard line. Cats will have it there, first and 10. 31-yard punt by Mike Brantner. K-State Center for Agricultural Resources and the Environment reminds you to help protect and conserve Kansas water resources. That's K-Care because we care about Kansas. Iowa State scored on their first two possessions, but since then, Wyatt, on the last four possessions, K-State has forced them to punt three times, and that big hit right before halftime near the goal line was the only turnover the Wildcats defense caused. Now, Iowa State also had a muff on a punt return, so they've turned over the football twice today. Logan Robinson remains in there for the Wildcats in at right guard. Single setback, James Johnson. There's the fake to him. Freeman rolling to the right, throwing. Mastrud's got it. Jaron to the 30, and knocked down at the 33-yard line. Nice play there by the Wildcats. Alvin Bowen is the tackler. It'll bring up after a gain of seven, second down and three. They ran a bootleg, and what they try to do is isolate the cornerback in cover two, which is Chris Singleton. If he drops back who, on a deep receiver who's running a V flag type of route, then you throw the ball to the tight end short. If he comes up and watches for the tight end coming out of his area, you throw the ball downfield. That time he sunk back toward the deep receiver. Chris Singleton was nowhere near Mastrude, who caught the football and took it out for a seven-yard gain. Seven tackles for Alvin Ace Bowen. I formation. Here's the fake to the back, rolling to the right. Short side right is Freeman. He'll throw, and it's... Well, it was caught and then dropped by Mastrude under heavy pressure at the 32. Caleb Berg all over him there, and it'll bring up third down and three. It was the same play, but this time Iowa State had it covered so much better. They were in a man-to-man -man type of situation, which changed everything. Josh Freeman had pressure on him through the ball, which would have been probably a loss of one. If the ball would have been caught, it fell away as Caleb Berg was up close to the line of scrimmage from his strong safety position and knocking it down. So that sets up this third and three situation. Two receivers to the left, wide receiver to the right. Norwood is out of the game for Kansas State. The running back is James Johnson offset to the right. Here's Freeman to throw on third and three, being pressured. Steps away from one and throws. The ball is batted and knocked down at the 40-yard line. Mastrude, the intended receiver, and Tyrone McKenzie simply stated that is a heck of a play by Tyrone McKenzie to knock that ball away. Unfortunately for the Wildcats, he did make a great play over the middle, knocking the ball away from Jaron Mastrude, who was trying to work his way over the middle on a second cut because Josh Freeman looked like he was sacked. A free blitzer got right to him. He pushed the blitzer away, allowed himself to throw the ball downfield, but Iowa State was good enough to force a punt. Catch to punt, not a lot of pressure here, and a great kick by Rayer. Back inside the 10 is Sumrall. He's got it at the 5, and he can't get away from Yaman Fakers. He'll be spun down at the 7-yard line. 
Great coverage by Yaman Figures and the Wildcats after a booming kick by Tim Rayer. Wow, that was amazing. 61 yards on the punt and a timeout. A 10-10 tie with 10-01 to go in the third. This is the K-State Sports Network from Learfield Sports. And then Josh Freeman, a two-yard pass to John McArdle, the first touchdown pass of the career of Josh Freeman. Meyer hands it off here, and this is Scales running behind left guard, and he blasts across the 10 and out to near the 12-yard line. And a late flag comes in after a gain of five. And Zach Dials, a busy guy today, the tackler for Kansas State University. K-State got into an eight-man front and had Kyle Williams come off the edge as a strong safety to help on a tackle. Now, late in the play, Mylon Moses was out in a little battle with Kevin Hollis. The interpretation is being discussed from two of the officials as the referee stands back quietly and respectfully, letting the two guys decide what call should be made. So not in the discussions, the referee is going to let them talk it out. A lot of times you become a mediator, get in there and say, hey guys, let's make a decision. So it's going to be interesting. Will they pick up the flag and wave it off? Or will they call it on someone? Or will they just say, hey, it's on both so there's really no damage? Important call right here. It sure is. You could back Iowa State up awful close to the goal line if it's after the play and it's still second down. Or if they get a first down, it gives them some decent field position if it's against Kansas State. They're going to wave it off. There is no foul. The block was not back toward the original position of the ball. Let's go downstairs to Matt. Now, a couple of things to watch for Iowa State. They've not been called, but there have been a couple of late hits. One on Josh Freeman during the last K-State drive. And then on the punt, Brandon Archer took a late shot, but we've not seen laundry on the field. Second and five for the Clones. The football at their own 12-yard line. Meyer is in the shotgun, scales the running back to his right. Twin receivers to the right side. There's the snap, fake to the back. Rolling to the right is Brett Meyer under pressure from Dial, steps away from him, but Archer's got him at the 10. Brandon Archer makes the stop at the 10. It's a loss of two. And that'll be a sack for Brandon Archer because they caught him in the backfield. Brandon Archer waited for that play to unfold, kept his position on the outside perfectly. They tried to roll out Brett Meyer, pulled a lineman out in front of him, and Meyer made sure that he couldn't roll past. Archer, I'm sorry, made sure that Meyer couldn't roll past him, kept him in the pocket, and then when he got flushed, who was there to make the tackle? Nice job by Brandon Archer and the others who did put pressure on the quarterback. Tough call here for offensive coordinator Barney Cotton. Third and seven Cyclones at their own ten, moving from left to right. There's the snap to Brett Meyer, retreats to the goal line, now steps up and throws. It's caught at the 20 and out near the 28-yard line is the Cyclone receiver, Mylon Moses. He's tackled by McKinney and Kyle Williams, 17 yards and a first down. Good job of picking up the blitz by that Iowa State front wall. K-State brought the heat and Meyer was not affected. He was able to stand in the pocket, look downfield, and then found a receiver working against Justin McKinney on a slant route over the middle of the field. Iowa State converts and takes the ball out to the 29-yard line. Meyer is now 10 of 16 for 131 yards. First down at the 28 for Iowa State, moving from left to right. Meyer again back to throw and has some time down the middle, and it is caught at the 49-yard line, and that will be... Marquise Hamilton. He has made a couple of big catches this year. And Kevin Hollis is the tackler. Another big gain. That one good for 21 and another Iowa State first down. That was a first down call where Brett Meyer, experienced as he is, got the football and looked to his left. Knowing he didn't want to throw the football to the left, he wanted to throw the ball down the right hash mark to Marquise Hamilton. But by looking to the left, he never let on that that was a play. And then after the receiver cleared the linebacker area, he delivered the ball perfectly. First and 10 from the 49, and Meyer looks left and throws that way. It's caught near midfield and taken to the 45 and close to the first down marker. And that will be Yusef Messiah, his second catch of the day, working on that far left side. It'll be second down and about a yard to go for Iowa State at the Kansas State 41 and a half. Well, one play that Iowa State's going to continually go back to is the bubble type of screen. They're seeing Kansas State in first down situations play the cover too so they got three guys right at the line of scrimmage k-state's got two defenders they figure if those two guys can play physical make blocks and get the ball out to the third guy real quick he can get up field before the other wildcat pursuit can get there it worked for nine yards cats 10 cyclones 10 second and one from the 42 and this is scales tries to bounce outside left and he breaks a tackle and slides to the 35 yard line kind of got away from 
Alfonso Moran for a moment, and then uh, Moran got part of his foot and got him down at the 35. Iowa State with another first down, and they're on the move here from left to right. Looked like Rob Jackson might have had a chance to make the tackle in the backfield on Jason Scales as he ran around the left side, but he went right past that, and then he kind of ran over Justin McKinney. McKinney put a good physical hit on him but couldn't drag him to the ground. He dove forward, kept his feet for a little while, and got it down to the K-State 35. Marquise Hamilton wide to the right. Wide receiver to the left. Two tight ends both to the right side and Meyer to throw. Looking short side for Sumrall and batted down at the 20-yard line by Justin McKinney. Justin McKinney somehow got a paw up there and knocked that one down. Beautiful play. Your Midwest Ford dealer. If it's built Ford tough, you'll find it at your Midwest Ford dealer. Ford bold moves. Second and 10 Iowa State now at the K-State 35. Again, KU beats Colorado 20-15. Nebraska early in the third, leading at Oklahoma State 23-20. Oklahoma won in Columbia today 26-10. Later tonight, Texas at Tech and AM at Baylor. Second and 10 from the 35. Meyer in the shotgun. Quick throw out here into the right flat, and it is caught and taken down to the Wildcat 26-yard line. And Messiah makes another catch. Antoine Moore is the tackler. Boy, Yusef Messiah with his third catch of the day, two in this drive, and Iowa State very close to another first down just a yard away, third and one. Well, it's the same play that we saw run to the left. This time it was ran to the right, and that was a bullet thrown out there by Brett Meyer to get the ball. Good blocking up front. Austin Flynn's not making many catches, but he's doing a good job blocking on those screens for Iowa State. Full back into the ball game on third and short, and here's a handoff to Johnson. The ball comes out late inside the 25. K-State thinks they've got it. No signal from the officials yet, and the referee is saying it is down. He's saying down by contact, and it's a first down. The freshman, Josh Johnson, jumped up over the pile after an eye formation isolation play, and the ball came out, and the ball rolled forward a few yards. Wildcats jumped on the football, thinking they had it. Iowa State says, we've got it. The official says, does not matter. It's back here, just past the 25-yard line, just inside. They say Iowa State retains the football and converts on third down. Zach Diles was there defensively. Here's Matt. I know the fans are unhappy, but it's the right call. The ground forced the fumble. 5.52 and the clock running. Time remaining in the third quarter in a 10-10 game. Iowa State now first and 10 at the Wildcat 25. The Cat defense has stiffened since the early part of the game. They need to do it here, too. Brett Meyer in the gun at the 30. There's the snap, fake to the back. Meyer's gonna run to the left side, and he stumbles at the 20 and forward to about the 17-yard line as he picks up eight. Brandon Archer and Zach Dials, two standout Wildcat linebackers, make the tackle. That looked like a bunch of cars in a demolition derby out there because guys were running at each other. First of all, running back ran right into the K-State defensive end, Eric Childs, which opened up a gap around the left side for Brett Meyer. He looked like he could gain a lot of yardage until he ran into his own man, R.J. Sumrall. R.J. was trying to make a block, and he accidentally stopped the quarterback, Brett Meyer. Zach Dials, 10 tackles and a sack today. Second and two from the 17. Ball just inside the far left hash. Here's Johnson. Dials got him again at about the 16-yard line, about a yard shy of the first down. Josh Johnson is the tackler, or I should say the ball carrier, and Dials got him at the 16. Third and one play. Oh, big, big play coming. Yeah, Iowa State's five of nine on third downs today. They haven't been great on third down conversions this year. Eighth in the Big 12, but this is a scoring range type play with the ball near the 16-yard line. Sumrall left, Hamilton to the right, and all kinds of movement up front. They're saying that K-State yelled out a snap count. Now, when it's on the first sound, you can do that. And the linemen, three linemen jumped, not just one. The whole left side jumped. Dead ball foul, a full start by number 58 of the offense. The penalty's five yards, and it's still third down. What a defender wants to do is if he thinks that they might go on an early count, like set, what you want to do is when they're about ready to get the hands underneath the center, you go shift. You're just telling your guys to move. Happens to be a noise that makes a few linemen jump. So be it. Five-yard penalty against Iowa State. Little veteran play. Shift. You're awesome. Third and six from the 21 for Iowa State in a 10-10 game. 4.15 to go here in the third quarter. Cyclones moving from left to right. There's the snap to Brett Meyer. Has some pressure. Gets away from one and not the second. Tackled at the 23-yard line by Zach Dials. 
Looked like the first guy he spun away from, I don't know how, but it was Brandon Archer and Dials carousing. Dials and Archer are getting some sack numbers today. They sure are. That pushes Iowa State back. The ball's inside the hash mark of the 23. So it'll be a 40-yard field goal for Iowa State's kicker, who's only missed one all this year. He's so accurate. He had a 52-yarder last week and a 48-yarder today, but in this distance, he is normally very good. There's the snap and placement kick on the way by Culbertson, a low, long drive, and he missed it. A line drive that he missed. How about that? Culbertson misses it from 40, and we're still a 10-10 tie with 3.26 to go in the third quarter in a timeout. Josh Freeman has been picked once today, but he's thrown the ball well. He's 10 of 15 for 105 yards. Wants to throw here. This is Gonzalez. Daniel left side down at the 29. And it's John Banks who makes the tackle. That's a gain of six on first down for the Cats, throwing to the left near side. Hey, K-State fans, show your Wildcat pride while you drive and purchase a license plate from the K-State Alumni Association. Call 1-800-600-ALUM or visit www.shop.com k-state.com k-state.com second and three from the 29 ball near hash Jordan Bedore all the way at center today so far here's James Johnson trying to work left side now heads back to the middle and is close to the first down marker near the 32 yard line Bryce Broxma makes the tackle for Iowa State he's out of Shelton Iowa a junior he started the last three games actually the this is his fourth start in a row after Rashawn Parker a true freshman started the first five games at defensive end. They've been scrambling since Jason Berryman was let go. Wyatt, this is third and about a football. And earlier when K-State had this situation, they quarterback sneaked it. Let's see if the Cats do it again with Josh Freeman. Up under center, Bedore. He is going to quarterback sneak it, and Rashad Norwood pushing his quarterback forward, and it appears that it will be enough for a first down. It's not a dead sense here, Stan. We'll take a look at it as they... I think he Unpile, has but it looks like he's got it. You know, go down. How, you know how it works, Wyatt, when you say it. <laughs> it's done. Let's go down to Matt. Yeah, that's a first down by a football. I, what I wanted to throw in right quick was, Stan, with your shifting earlier, I smell a little bit of a background in theater, possibly. Well, you know, you, you got to talk to your linemen and your defensive line, and the uh, linebackers just want his guys to get in the right position. Just happens to be said right as the snap count is. From the 33, first down, James Johnson right side, 35, and close to the 37-yard line before he is knocked down. Matt knows about that because I was on the other side, Matt. I watched those guys do it to us, which made me very uneasy to ever go on the first sound. I, I don't like putting it up for grabs. If it's third and one as a quarterback, I'd rather go on a longer count but, but a quick count sometimes is nice, but it scares me that that stunt is going to be pulled and you guys lose five yards because the quarterback went on the first sound. So one of the theories is get up there, and if you don't normally go a long count, if you just take off, they won't be ready. But those linebackers are pretty smart out there. Second down and six cats from their own 37. Cyclone showing blitz. There's the fake to the back. Freeman rolls right, throws that way. Mastrude at the 40, stretches for the first down and appears to have it at the 43-yard line as Alvin Bowen makes the tackle. Again, Freeman rolling to the right, getting away from pressure and hitting Jaron Mastrud, who's had a very nice day catching the ball today. The good thing that Josh Freeman did is he realized there was a blitz from the opposite side as Caleb Burke came running from a safety position into the line of scrimmage. So he realized as he rolled to the right, he better hurry so he doesn't get caught from behind and get rid of the football. He realized everything was under control, did a nice job of getting the ball for a first down out to the right side. First and 10 cats, a minute to go in the third quarter. We're tied at 10. Iowa State right up there on the line of scrimmage with one of those linebackers. There's the snap. Freeman fakes to the back. Now drops, looks right, throws that way, and it's caught by Yaman Fingers at the 40, 35, down the sideline and just shy of the 30, steps out at the 31. Jason Harris is the tackler just inside the 32-yard line. Good arm strength by Josh Freeman. He checked to that play, realized that they're blitzing in man-to-man -to, -man to the outside. They faked the up route, made it look like the speedster, Yaman Figures, is trying to go deep, but then he stopped. Arm strength of Josh Freeman got it there before Chris Singleton could make a play. Chris Singleton thought, oh, I'm going to intercept this ball, but it got to Yaman Figures fast, and Yaman was able to break away and get further upfield. 25 yards on the pass play, first down. 
Here's Johnson, right side. He is at the 20. He's at the 15. Angles to the left. Touchdown! Touchdown! Touchdown, Wildcats! They have their first lead of the day. It's 16 to 10 with 47 seconds to go in the third. What a play, 47 yards for the Wildcats. Great run by James Johnson. He stretched it to the right, planted his foot, and cut right through the middle of the defense. But with his speed and decisiveness, no defender could get off their block and make a tackle. And when he got down to the 10-yard line, there was only one defender left, but he was being blocked. He cut it all the way back to the left side on a play that started to the right, and K-State has the lead finally in this ball game. That is 32 yards on the run. Here's the extra point for Snodgrass. The kick is up. It's good. It's good. And the Wildcats' lead is 17 to 10. 47 seconds to go in the third quarter. Let's see if we go to break here. Yes, we do. Well, timeout. You're listening to K-State Football. Here's the kick. Snodgrass gets it away near side, and it's over the head of Milan Moses and through the back of the end zone. What an impressive drive for the Cats after that Culbertson miss. Big swing in this game. Why miss field goals lead to momentum, I don't know, but the game started with K-State driving right down the field. Jeff Snodgrass missed a 43-yard field goal, and Iowa State turned around and went 74 yards in nine plays to lead 7-0. K-State responds after a 40-yard missed field goal by Brett Culbertson, Culbertson, and they go 77 yards in seven plays. Nice run by James Johnson. Nice passing, especially the 25-yarder on a check to Yaman Figures. Cyclones at their own 20. Ball in the center of the field. Moving from left to right, it's first and 10. Scales is the running back for the injured Stevie Hicks and gets the call here. And he's got a fine run to the 29-yard line. Got nine on first down. Andrew Erker there for the Cats along with Kyle Williams. That will end the third quarter. K-State outscored Iowa State 7-0. to zero. After three, it's 17-10 to 10 in favor of Kansas State. Brett Meyer for one of the few times today up under center. Turns, hands it off, and this is Johnson, and he'll take it to near the 34, and that will be a first down as Josh Johnson, the freshman from Ponca City, Oklahoma, a true freshman. He had one rush for six yards all year coming into today. Through three quarters, 272 yards for Iowa State. The Wildcats with 225. The first downs were 15 to 11 in favor of the Cyclones. James Johnson, 78 rush yards through three quarters of play. And Josh Freeman, 13 of 18 for 143 yards. From the 33, Cyclones first and 10. Near left hash. Meyer in the gun, back to throw. Looking right. Now is just going to throw this one towards the side. And it's behind, actually, Austin Flynn, who's struggling with a leg injury. And it's incomplete at the 32. Devin Anderson covering for the Wildcats of Kansas State. It'll be second and 10. Great coverage downfield. K-State jumped into a man-to-man. -man. Nothing was open. Brett Meyer just threw the ball away from his receiver. So that he made sure that Devin Anderson couldn't make a play on it. Fortunately for Iowa State, Austin Flynn dropped the ball. He wasn't trying to drop it. But <laughs> looking in his son, it was a tough catch. If he would have caught it, he would have lost two yards. Messiah goes to the right. He's one of three receivers out there. Twin receivers to the left. And Meyer in the gun on second and 10 from the 33. Meyer looks left, goes that way to Milan Moses. He takes it across the 35 and will be marked at about the 37-yard line. Justin McKinney is the tackler, giving assist to Brandon Archer. Nice gain on the play. It'll be third down and six from the 37. Milan Moses does not look comfortable making catches out there, but... He comes from a pretty good family. His father, Jerry, played football at Iowa State in the early 70s, and his brother, J.J., pretty well known. He had one of his better games ever in 2004 against K-State. He had a 42-yard reception. This time it was only a four-yard catch. Wide receiver left, two receivers right. Back to throw is Brett Meyer on third and six. He'll step up near side, and that ball is caught in a dive. That is Milan Moses near the Kansas State 27-yard line. That is some kind of throw and catch. Justin McKinney, Kyle Williams, the stop for K-State. It was a stop and go, and McKinney looked like he was in good coverage all the way down the left sideline. Milan Moses, while he was running downfield, 
dove and caught the football, but just before that, it looked like he gave a little nudge to Justin McKinney, just enough to give him a chance to catch the football. A nice diving catch right in front of the K-State bench, and Iowa State converts on third and long with a big play down to the K-State 26. 36 yards, first down at the 26 for Brett Meyer and company. Twin receivers to the right. Barkham of the tight end on the left. And here is Johnson, the running back. And Archer has him at the 24-yard line. He got a couple on that play. It'll bring up second down and eight. We're in the first couple of minutes of the fourth quarter. Cats on top of the game, 17 to 10. And K-State Wildcat football brought to you by Preferred Health Systems. Health plans that work. He tried to cut that ball back. It was designed to go to the right. He immediately decided he was going to the left. And you can't do that with Brandon Archer playing that backside linebacker position. He knows how to get his fits. He was right there at the line of scrimmage, so it was a very short gain. Trips to the right, Moses to the left, and now he'll go in motion to the right side. Second down and eight from the 24. Brett Meyer throws far side. Moses has it, gets a block at the 25, and is with a flag down, tackled at the 21-yard line by Zach Dials. Dials has really played himself a ball game here today. Uh, there's going to be a call against Yusef Messiah trying to block Kyle Williams. This is a play they keep running, and it is getting harder and harder for Iowa State to execute it because K-State is jumping. First of all, Ian Campbell, the defensive end position, is trying to jump so high and make himself so wide, there's almost no way the ball can be thrown by him. Somehow, Brett Meyer got it by, but at the point of the attack, a wide receiver trying to make a block was called for a hold by the referee. Very unusual that he would make the call. Holding by number nine of the offense. Penalty is 10 yards and replay second down. Zach Dials with 13 total stops today and over to the sideline with a quick word with defensive coordinator Raheem Morris and now back out onto the, uh, onto the middle of the field. 13 tackles in a game, if it ends up being official, would be his best in his career. Yeah. Now, why I say if it's official, the sports information people up here are trying to watch the game. They determine who makes a tackle right now. But then the coaches go back and watch the film in slow motion, and they actually make the official tackle count. Second and 17 clones from the 39 of the Cats. Meyer back to throw. Looks left and it's incomplete. And Archer all over the intended receiver. Josh Johnson out of the backfield. Great recognition by the K-State Wildcats pass rush. Ian Campbell and the defensive lineman. Blake Seiler. Quentin Eccles, very experienced ball players, and Rob Jackson. They started pushing to the quarterback. Then he immediately realized, hey, these guys aren't trying to stop us. So they stopped right there, and we're in the path of the screen. There was nowhere to throw the football. J Josh Johnson had Wildcats all around him, so Brett Meyer just had to throw it away. Hamilton and Sumrall to the right. Milan Moses to the left. Cyclones playing without Stevie Hicks and Todd Blythe today. It's third and 17. Meyer under pressure, and Campbell's got him. Ian Campbell's got the sack at the 40-yard line. Off the edge, far side, Ian Campbell with another sack for the Wildcats. Ian Campbell is always good for at least one per game. Coming into the game, only three away from the K-State record in a season in 1996. The record was 11 and a half sacks for Niall Wyron. That's the ninth and a half sack on third down. Ian Campbell comes around on third and long with an NFL-type blitz right in the face of Brett Meyer, pulls him down to 40, and Iowa State again has to punt. Brantner stands at his own 46-yard line here on the near side hash. Good snap, and here's the kick. A little pooch effort here, and it's going to bounce at about the two and into the end zone. Let's run downstairs quickly to Matt. Josh Freeman is up under center. Jordan Bedore. James Johnson is the running back. He'll get the call here, trying to get wide right. He got the corner. 25, he's at the 30. Spins to about the 32-yard line. James Johnson with a heck of a play. And Jason Harris is the tackler. The Wildcat coaches here on the near side thrilled with that blocking. They did a nice job of securing the corner, and Johnson's speed allowed him to get around the corner and out for a double-digit run, a 12-yard run out to the 32. Great blocking by the line at the point of attack and good decisive running by James Johnson, who is getting more and more into a rhythm. He looks today late in this game like he did late in the Missouri game. Here's the handoff, Johnson, short side right, and he can't get away from all of the white shirts and pushed out at the 33. It's a gain of a yard. Tackler on the play, Caleb Berg. Altel lets you choose who 
You call for free with my circle. Choose wireless, home, or office numbers anywhere in the U.S. That's any number on any network. Visit AltelCircle.com for details. Second and nine from the 33. Under 10 and a half minutes to play in this one now. Wildcats on top by seven, 17 to 10. Yaman figures goes wide left. Two tight ends in the game for Ron Prince's Wildcats and John McArdle in there as the fullback now in front of James Johnson. Josh Freeman steps back away from center and maybe changing the play. Snap clock is down to one. There's the handoff, and it's going to go to Johnson working left side, and not much here as he is stuffed for no game. It's a formation K-State has liked playing with this year. Double tied in, one receiver out, eye formation in the backfield. They've been able to run the ball against some teams with that, but also you can set up some throwing action because everyone is so tight. Even though it was second and long, they'll still react to your formation. A lot of times you see that type of formation on a third and one if you want to throw a play action pass. Tyrone McKenzie was the tackler. Third and nine for the Wildcats from their own 33. Johnson remains the running back. Two receivers to the right. Wide receiver to the left and Freeman back to throw. Under pressure, throws underneath to Johnson and he is tackled at about the 29 and they're going to rule it incomplete. Sean Moorhead who has had a fine game for Iowa State as a defensive end is there and K-State will have to punt on fourth and nine from their 33. They brought that strong safety blitz. Again, Caleb Burke tries to time it out and runs from his normal lining, his alignment into the line of scrimmage, came back. He wasn't the rusher that got to the quarterback but he took up the last blocker. Then pressure came. Freeman tried to get rid of the football to dump it out to Rashad Norwood. They felt like he didn't have the football long enough to call it a fumble. It's incomplete, and K-State's forced to punt. Rayer stands at his own 20, and R.J. Summerall back at the Iowa State 30. Good snap from Mortimer. Kick is away. High kick. And this one will go at about the 30, angle to the far side and out of bounds. They'll mark it at the 27. Twin receivers wide left and right for Brett Meyer. The junior quarterback back to throw on first down. Looking, has some time. Now out of the pocket he goes, rolling to the short side right. He'll run to the 30 and steps out at the 34 right in front of the Wildcat linebacker, Reggie Walker. He tried to throw the ball deep downfield. Nothing there, but the pass rush never threatened him. And so he just took his time, worked out to the right side, and ended up running the ball down the field. A good, experienced play. In the lineup now for K-State, Kevin Hollis, the redshirt freshman from Gilmore, Texas, is out there playing a free safety position. Courtney Herndon started the game, but he was injured very early. So Andrew Urkers had a lot of time back there at free safety, but now it's Kevin Hollis. Trips left, two receivers to the short side right. There's the snap to Meyer. He wants to run the ball. Can he get wide? No, he is tackled for a loss by Kyle Williams at the 33 for a loss of one. Boy, you could just see that was a purple streak heading towards Brett Meyer there. And that streak was number nine, Kyle Williams, with a terrific play. Yusef Messiah, the wide receiver, was supposed to make the block but did not. So Kyle Williams got in the backfield. It was like a sixth grade youth football sweep. You just snapped the ball back to the quarterback. He runs to the left. They couldn't get it blocked because the strong safety was there to make the tackle, which means we got a third down situation. Third and four. Big play as the Cyclones have the ball down by seven. 8.15 to go in the game. Meyer looks right, throws that way, and it's incomplete at the 41-yard line intended for Marquise Hamilton and Joshua Moore in coverage. And slow to get up as the intended receiver, Marquise Hamilton. The ball was thrown low. Marquise could not go down and get the ball on a slant. Again, trying to catch that football at that angle. Why? Look at the shadows. He is looking right into the sun. Yep. It's very hard. Coaches have got to take that into account when they're calling plays in critical situations. This time the ball is thrown low, doesn't pull it in, and so Iowa State is forced to punt on a three and out. Mike Brantner will kick this one from his own 20, and Yaman figures back at the Wildcat 21. There's the snap. Not a lot of pressure. Kick is away. Wobbly kick. Yaman will call for and make the fair catch at the 21-yard line. That is a 47-yard punt and a timeout. 8.03 to go. 17-10 Wildcats. First down cats from their 21-yard line. They're in the shade at the moment, trying to get into the sunlight, moving from left to right. Up by seven. There's the snap. Freeman turns, hands it off. It's going to go to James Johnson left side, and he gets only about a yard. And we pause 10 seconds for station identification on the K-State Sports Network. You're listening to K-State Football. 
second and nine from the 21. McKenzie and Rubin, the tacklers for Iowa State. James Johnson got one yard on that play. It's second down and nine Wildcats. K-State leading 17 to 10. And James Johnson right now with 91 yards rushing on 17 tries. Freeman up under center. Jordan Bedore, far side. There's the turn and the give. This is Johnson trying to get wide, and he'll take it for a couple to near the 23. We approach the seven-minute mark. We're there right now. Third down and long coming for the Cats, third and seven. They ran the same play twice off the left side. Iowa State doing a pretty good job. This is a situation that K-State worked on a lot during the spring and fall practice, situational offense. What happens when you have the lead and you're getting down into the fourth quarter? Can you keep the football? Can you run the clock and win the ball game? They've got an opportunity to do that right here, but after running two plays, it's third and eight. From the 23-yard line. Two receivers to the right, two tight ends, one each way, left and right. Freeman wants to throw, looking, crossing route. Yaman's got it at the 30 far side, 35-40, first down to the 41-yard line. Yaman figures with the play, Chris Singleton the tackler. That is 18 yards and a Wildcat first down. Great play call. Iowa State's bringing that blitz on third down where Caleb Berg, the strong safety, comes running in. They're man-to-man, -man. and K-State against man-to-man -man wants to run crossing routes. Get there quick, and why not have one of your fastest guys or the fastest guy, Yaman Figures, who line up in the right slot, just cut right through the linebacker area because it's vacated because of the blitz. Throw the ball right on target, keep him running upfield, and he takes it out for a third down conversion and a first down at the 41-yard line. Figures to the left, two receivers to the right. Here's the draw to James Johnson. Angles outside left. He's got it at the midfield stripe and just tripped up at the 46-yard line of Iowa State. But another nice gain, 13 yards and a first down. Wildcats moving the ball here with 5.58 to go in the game and up 17-10. to K-State football brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Kansas. Providing Kansas families with flexible coverage plans like Blue Choice. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Kansas says we're there for you. Caleb Berg, the last tackler for Iowa State. And barely brought him down, kind of tripped him up. And as Johnson went by, he fell over, but still a nice gain into Iowa State territory. From the 46, first down, I formation. There's the handoff to Johnson. Starts left, angles to the middle. He's at the 40, inside the 40, down to the 38-yard line. That is a terrific run and good blocking. Banks right there, along with Caleb Berg for Iowa State University. K-State second and two. Let's go downstairs to Matt. Tell you, one of the things I'm really starting to like about James Johnson is, is his patience. He took his time, let the block start to develop, and then he cut right behind him into open space. And his consistency for the second week in a row. He is yes. over 100 yards rushing the football for K-State. Right now, 20 for 106 for James. Second down and two Wildcats at the Cyclone 38. Under five minutes to go in the game now. Cats up seven, 17-10. Here's Johnson. Waits on a block. Tries to get outside. Handy trying to block for him, and he'll get to about the 37 is all. And Harris is the tackler. This is a big call coming here. Third and one Cats at the Cyclone 36 and a half. And they're probably just outside of the range. They would like Jeff Snodgrass to try a field goal. They'd love to get a first down here and scoot the ball closer upfield. You'd love to end up with a touchdown and waste all the time. But at the minimum, what you're thinking right now is get a field goal. Go up by two scores with as little time left as it is. That probably will be enough to win the ball game. But it takes execution out here near the 35-yard line. Figures to the right, two tight ends. Mastrude here on the near side. Here's the handoff to Leon Patton. He got to the outside. He's at the 30. He's at the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Wildcat touchdown. Leon Patton with 4.06 to go. There's your two scores, Stan. 37 yards and a touchdown for Leon Patton. That's 23 to 10. It's a great substitution by putting that formation together in Leon Patton. It's an instant replay of what we saw against Oklahoma State. Everybody tightens up against Oklahoma State on fourth down. He took it around the left side. Today, he bounced it out to the left side and outrun the defenders. Caleb Berg looked like he might have an angle to at least push him out of bounds deep into Iowa State territory, but no way. The speedster took it around the left side, down the left sideline, and Leon Patton takes it in for a 37-yard touchdown. Here's the extra point try, and Snodgrass boots it through there. Wildcats 24, Cyclones 10 with 4.06 to play in this football game. 
And the Wildcat fans are happy at the moment. We'll take a break. This is the K-State Sports Network from Learfield Sports. Sumrall is back deep for the Cyclones, and this ball is kicked to the far side by Snodgrass. It bounces at the 10, and it's picked up at about the 5 to the 10, 15. Moses to the 20, and he stopped for a moment and just got hammered at the 21-yard line. A 16-yard return. Let's go downstairs to Matt. On the touchdown run by Leon Patton, Kansas State's uh, Robinson, the right guard, pulled and got onto the linebacker Bowen. A big play, and when he came to the sideline, he was greeted welcomely by a number of the K-State coaches. A great block by Logan Robinson. Our second half affiliate salute goes to KMZA and KMZA in Hiawatha and Seneca. Kansaland Radio, their general manager is Robert Hilton. And LJ Trant is the program director. Great to have him with us here today. Iowa State first down. Meyer quick throw and it's batted down by Rob Jackson at the line of scrimmage, the defensive end. He really read that one well, Stan. Well, this defensive ends have been taught that that play's coming. You need to help us because we don't want to bring our safety up and play man-to-man -man all the time. So they have done a great job of trying to make themselves as big as possible. We talked about how Brett Myers almost had to throw curveballs to get past him to still get the ball to the outside. Finally, a Wildcat defensive end times it out right and knocks it down. Flynn and Hamilton to the short side right. Two receivers to the left. There's the snap to Brett Meyer. Under pressure, throws over the middle, and that is the fullback. And taken ahead, short of the first down to about the 27, Ryan Cook, Antoine Moore, and Brandon Archer getting together on the Wildcat stop. It's going to bring up third and five for the Cyclones at their own 26. Only second reception by that fullback, Cook, this year. The first one came from the punter. There's the snap. Meyer looks left, throws that way, picked off. It's Devin Anderson. He's going to take it to the house. 10-5, touchdown. Kansas State is on the board again. 3.06 to go. 31 yards on the return, and it's 30-10 to Wildcats. Iowa State has tried to throw slant patterns all day long. This time, Brett Meyer threw the ball to the left side and never saw Devin Anderson, who jumped the slant caught the football near the 25-yard line and took it in easily for a Wildcat touchdown. And K-State has their 30th point, looking for the 31st as they pull away from Iowa State late in the game. Dylan Meyer, the holder, needing some help. And here comes Jaron Mastrude into the game. Snodgrass will try to add the extra point. What a play by Devin Anderson on that return. There's the snap and placement. Kick on the way. It is good. 31 to 10 Wildcats with 3.06 to go in the contest. Here is the approach, and this one is an end over ender. This one is headed to the far side, and it'll be taken to the 10. Milan Moses to the 15, 20, spins away from one, and takes it to the 26 yard line before he goes down right there. 2.55 to go, and the tackler, Ray Cheatham for K-State on special teams. Cyclones at their own 26. We've got a chance to tell you harvest scores are coming in and Fontenelle's 8K 389 yield guard plus roundup ready corn dominates. In Joe D. Donder's plot at St. Mary's, Fontenelle 8K 389 places first of nine entries and yields 179 bushels, beating Garst 76-63 by 27 bushels. Call 800-CR-YIELD or see Bob Walston in Manhattan. Back to throw is Brett Meyer. 
Meyer looking, looking now, flushed out of the pocket, and he will slide ahead to the 30. He got three on that play, down to 235 to go. Again, call 800 CR Yield or see Bob Walston in Manhattan about 8K 389 Dominator Corn from Fontenelle Hybrids. Under two and a half to go, 31 10 Wildcats. Meyer in the gun, trips left, wide receiver right. Cook is the running back. Back to throw is Meyer, looking near side, and that ball is caught on the sideline. Did he get it in bounds? Yes, he did. Hamilton with a heck of a catch and guarded there defensively by Kevin Hollis. First down, Iowa State. Dangerous throw right over the head of K-State's cornerback, Justin McKinney. Somehow he got the ball over his head, and the catch by Marquise Hamilton was a tough one because as he caught the ball with his toes barely in the green, he got ripped from the safety, Kevin Hollis, who came over to make the hit. From the 44-yard line, first down. Meyer again in the shotgun, back to throw. Dancing around a bit, throws far side, and Moses had it and dropped it at the 48-yard line. Mylon Moses covered by Josh Moore. Covered by the sun right in his eyes, too. That's true. You see him look, he never saw it. He saw the ball go from the quarterback's hands, and all of a sudden it kind of hit him right in the face mask. You know, as we sit here and watch from this angle, you can certainly see how difficult that must be to look up into that sunlight. It was, well, I, had, I used to stand from the sideline over there. That used to be the, the visitor sideline now, used to be the home sideline. We used to stand there and watch it all the time. With your hands up like this? Yeah, you yeah. could not see from that angle as the ball came your way. Second and 10 from the 44. Meyer, two receivers each way, looking left. Now flushed a little bit to his left. He throws, it's Cook at midfield. A big hard guy to tackle and he'll take it to the 47 of the Wildcats before he is spun down. Eric Childs is there, along with Reggie Walker. Clock keeps running, though. He did not get past the first down marker. So it's third down, and clock continues to run as Iowa State gets their formation balanced. Third and one, Cyclones at the Wildcat 47. There's the snap to Meyer. Looking left, throwing left, and it's behind the receiver. Marquise Hamilton, Ray Cheatham covering. And it'll be fourth and one, Iowa State at the K-State 47. You can take life as it comes or grab life by the horns, Dodge. An update on the Nebraska at Oklahoma State game. That contest with just under 12 minutes to go is now 27-23 Cowboys. So they jump on the Huskers first in the third quarter of that one down in Stillwater. Fourth and a yard, I formation. Meyer under center, turns, hands it off, and this is Johnson ahead for the first down to the Wildcat 43. Josh Johnson, the true freshman from Ponca City, Oklahoma, picks up the first down, and he's tackled by Stephen Klein. Cyclones right back up to the line of scrimmage at the Cat 44. Wildcats lead 31 to 10 with a minute 25 to play in this football game. There's the snap to Brett Meyer. Meyer looking. Now goes right side, and it is incomplete. Josh Moore covering against Sumrall, and two late flags come in over on that far side. Josh Moore there a little bit early. R.J. Sumrall, Mylon Moses, Marquise Hamilton. Pass interference on number 13 of the defense. It's a spot foul and an automatic first down. Those are the names we're hearing in the names K-State fans and players want to see rather than Todd Blythe who's sick and out Austin Flynn who's slowed by an ankle injury not moving around very well and John Davis who's been out there a little bit so these are the guys you'd want them to throw the football to and that's who Iowa State's had to throw the football to you know RJ Sumrall his cousin he has two of them in the pros Reggie Wayne of the Colts and Robert Ferguson of the Packers pretty good bloodlines first and 10 from the 36 and a stoppage of play right as the ball was snapped timeout Kansas State First time out. Wildcats will have two remaining. 1.17 to go. Cats trailed 10-0. Boy, that seems like last month now, doesn't it? It was 10-0 Cyclones after one. And Kansas State has continued to build on their lead since tying the previous that game play at 10. is being challenged. Nice job today of Josh Moore the stepping in. The ball was tipped. Therefore, there is no interference. It's second down on the 44-yard line. <laughs> and a little celebration bump between McKinney and Devin Anderson, who took one to the house Kansas a little State while ago. Kansas not charged a timeout. <laughs> First time we've seen the coaches challenge work here uh, and really be called by Kansas State's Ron Prince, and it is done well. So it's an incomplete pass rather than an interference call. 
Well, somebody saw it down there. And thus the challenge, and K State wins that one. Cyclones as they move the ball back, third and 10 from the Wildcat 44. Meyer today is 19 of 34 for 249 yards. Wildcats on top, 31 to 10. There's the snap to Brett Meyer. Looking, he'll step up. Now he's going to run the ball. Near side, 40. And he'll be pushed out of bounds at about the 37-yard line by Reggie Walker. Reggie with a nice read there and a quick recovery. Shy of the first down. They need the Wildcat 34 for a first down. So third and three coming for the Clones with a minute 10 to play in the game. It looked like he was going to take a hard hit, but his fullback came back and helped. Ryan Cook actually took two guys out, getting Justin McKinney and then knocking him into Rob Jackson, who has feet cut out from underneath him. Third and three from the 37. Big play here for the Cyclones. Trips to the right. Here's Meyer looking right side, throwing that way, and it's caught at the 31 and a first down to the 30-yard line. And that is R.J. Sumrall with the catch. He's had quite a day today. Joshua Moore and Devin Anderson tackle for Kansas State, and also Antoine Moore is there. So three Wildcats in on the stop, and we're down to one minute to play in the football game. First and 10 Cyclones at the Cat 30. There's the snap. Meyer retreats to the 40. Pressure, throws far sideline, and it's incomplete, and Urker hammers the intended receiver over there, Marquise Hamilton. And that stops the clock with 51.8 to go. It'll be second and 10 Iowa State at the Wildcat 30. K-State leading in this game 31-10 after trailing early 10-0. 52 seconds of beautiful weather <laughs> left, and uh, K-State fans will have plenty of time with this 2.30 start to celebrate after the game. Right now, we're just looking at the stats because with 52 seconds left, K-State's got this game in a bag. And they will win their fifth game of the year. Back to throw as Brett Meyer gets under pressure, and he will be sacked at the 37-yard line. And that is Stephen Klein with the play. Childs was also there, but it was Klein who got Klein him out. and dragged him down. Speaking of sacks, that's, Iowa State. that's Stephen Klein's out. first sack of his career. Oklahoma State now leading Nebraska 34-23. to Back to throw is Meyer on third and 16. It's Cook over the middle at the 30 to the 25, and he'll be short of the first down near the 22-yard line. Justin McKinney makes the tackle. It will be fourth and about two from the 23 for the Cyclones as we play the final 23 seconds of this game. Ryan Cook wants to keep playing all day. He has more catches today than he's had in his whole career That's combined. <laughs> timeout. Iowa State, second timeout. Meyer in the shotgun. Trips right, wide receiver left. Meyer is going to throw to the far side, and it's Moses. He's got the first down. Mylon Moses at the 18-yard line. And Ray, uh, make it to R.J. Sumrall, I'm sorry. R.J. Sumrall, the catch at the 18-yard line. First down, 17 and a half seconds to go. R.J. happy they've got further, far enough down to the north end of the field that the press box blocks the sun, so they finally can catch the ball from that angle. From the 18, first down. Here's Meyer looking. Under pressure, throws. It's caught. This is Austin Flynn at the 13-yard line. And down to five seconds to go. Shy of the first timeout. down, Zach Diles is the Iowa stopper. State. Final timeout. Second and five from the 13 with five seconds to go, and K-State leading 31-10. Meyer back to throw. Looking, looking into the end zone. Tipped and incomplete. And a big hit by Maurice Mack on the intended receiver. Austin Flynn, and that's the ball game. Maurice Mack with a nice play to end it for the Wildcats, who improved to 5-4 and four and 2-3 and three in conference play. The Wildcats win the homecoming game 31-10.
How much phone ahead for these flops? And quietly he checks. At 3,000. And it's 3,000 from Mason. Well, he picked a good spot to be aggressive earlier against Pecorale. This is not a good spot to be aggressive. More 